Bring the hype up, bring the hype up, turn it up. Bring the hype up, bring the hype up, turn it up. I'll be getting really, really hyped on the mic. Back in 2001, I was like a class clown type dude. I was also fascinated by just ill rhyming and all that. So over the years, I just started making funny music about my life. That's kind of how Hobson was being born in that process. Tell me my name's hot, cause that's my name. Making this dope rap, that's my game. A lot of people weren't reacting off of my music the way I wanted them to. Like, people had told me that the chances of me being a rapper like one in a million. But then as time went on, all the people who did music, they weren't fully committed like I was. Well, Hop was one of my good friends in high school. He's a couple years older than me. He would come over after school. He was like the homie that I did music with from time to time. So he dropped out, continued on his path making music. We've done that shit. We just sit there fucking grooving and jam out just for fucking hours. It hasn't changed. Like, I'll go to Hop's house, create music in the basement. Times will be up all night. Playing the same fucking looped chorus over and over and over. Like, hell yeah, this shit is dope. So when I was 21, you still had social media, but it wasn't popping like now. So you had to grind. Like, you had to go out in Atlanta, get your face seen, do all the showcases, try to do shows every fucking where. And I'm fucking spitting my shit and people looking at me like, what the fuck? Until you find those arenas and showcases that cater to artists like yourself. To the stage, Hobson, give it up for Hobson, y'all. Give it up. Put your hands together for the next half. Give it up, give it up. Come on, guys, you got to do better than that. Please put your hands together for the next half. I used to pay money, like, oh, it was so stupid. I was such an idiot. What's up, everybody? How you doing? So I would go to these little things that I found online about where you, you pay like 150 or 200 bucks. You can prepay for the tickets and then give them out to people or whatever. That's what I used to do. And then try to invite people. But I didn't have nobody to go, so I just bought the tickets and just went by myself. I started making music when I was eight years old. I remember my first show the night before, just being in the hotel being in front of the mirror, just flexing, like we gonna kill him, you know what I'm saying? And then we got there. My heart started racing. I got up on that motherfucker and froze up. I was just like, fuck it, I'm gonna get good so I don't get scared no more. I started performing the correct way when I got with Funk Volume. Hobson and Swizz was doing it right. Like when I got with them, their show's so polished and just so tight. It made me want to practice, you know, the correct formula. I rap local weed, man, way tighter live than I do on the actual song. This is when you live with shit. You have shit for a certain time. Yeah. It's because I know how to swag it out more now. And I'm just, you know, it's more confidence in my voice than back then when I was recording it. I'm just developing a period as an artist. We just want to turn the show up to the max. I love crowd surfing. That's just such a feeling that I can't even explain it. I don't know, man. I just built my confidence up within the last couple of weeks. You know, Dizzy just started stage diving. Basically, you just get them to put their hands up and you just go, man. That catch you. If they put their hands up. They don't put their hands up, they just click them. I was like traumatized after crowd surfing the first time. Not because they just didn't catch me, but just because I just jumped where it wasn't a lot of motherfuckers at. I'm not gonna overthink it. I'm not, I'm done thinking about it. I'm just gonna do it when the moment comes. It was Hop who made me do it my first time. He just pulled me out on the spot randomly and was like, jump, motherfucker. Then when you do it, you're like, oh. Jump! 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 This is when he was just testing shit, just walking on the ground, hanging from the ceiling. Just like this nigga's loud, yo. He was trying to help me get my confidence back. Like, man, just do it. Tell him to put their hands up, man. He was like, you just hit the black. I'm doing it tonight. He was like, oh, nigga, you'll be the coolest nigga. You'll be cooler than Snoop Dogg. And I'm putting my hands out like, you have, like yeah, do that. <laughs> man, do and it. I'm a fuck. I'm a fuck. I'm a fuck. I'm a fuck. Every night we'd be like, are you going to stage that tonight? Are you going to stage that tonight? I think we just all decided, like, yo, we're going to just all do it at the same fucking time. Dizzy always be like, all right. Papa, you got the right. I'm going to be right here. 
That was a great part of the show. Man. You know, you can't go to school for this. You can't go to school and say, okay, well, four years, you're going to get a degree and get an intern here, and then, you know, after that, you can finally get a job. It's just in your head. You're just like, you're just going off of faith. There were hella times I thought about giving up. I had a daughter, and um, doing music, just looking at, just weighing the options, like, my music career is down here. Maybe I need to stop this shit. Like, it's not doing anything. It's not going to pay your bills. But the back of my head is you, when you love music, you love it. It's, it's not going to let you go. People always used to say, they, they always made me feel like I was wasting my time. And that shit used to hurt, too. I would go to, like, Interscope. I would try to get my demo to the security guy at the front. And I'd be like, yo, can you give this, um, to you put this in, in Jimmy Iovine's office or something? And they'd be like, yeah, man, yeah. And I used to be like, man, I'm making moves. I'm about to go up to Interscope tomorrow in Santa Monica, taking an hour to go over there in traffic and then drop the CD off and then an hour back in traffic. Like, hell yeah, I'm making moves in my life. I don't want to be that dude that's trying to fucking rap and I can't support my child and I can't support myself. I was like, yo, you know what? I'm gonna go to school, try to get a degree or some shit like that or get a trade. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I was like, man, I'm gonna try to be a fucking dentist. And I started actually working in dental offices for like three to four years, man. I was confident. I was seeing the shit they was doing. I was like, yo, fuck, I can be a fucking dentist. It's, it's, it's a piece of fucking cake. This shit ain't, you know, hard. It was a dream and I just knew I wanted to tackle it. If all this work was for nothing and I'm 30 years old I, and then this rap was just a hobby that I look back on, like, man, I remember I used to do that back in the day. Yeah, that shit. I was like, hell no, fuck that. I can, couldn't be at McDonald's or Walmart working out because that shit hurts to think about. So. I was, I just, I knew, I wasn't gonna give up. I was really gonna be a fucking dentist, no bullshit. And then, I don't know, hip hop just, just pulled me back in, like, man, get the fuck out of here with this bullshit, you tripping. Thank <laughs> <laughs> Niggas would have had some fucked up teeth. <laughs> what would you do if you were born bitch made? I used to always wear a white tee. I was on that hardcore LA style, like khaki pants and just a chain on. Would you stand and fight? I saw when I go to showcases, everybody had the same shit on. We all look like the same niggas in here right now. How in the world am I supposed to fucking make it if I look just like every other rapper in LA? Run for your life. I was like, okay, I'm putting white contacts in. I wear it all black. And I did that shit, and then for some reason, just as soon as I put it in, it just clicked. I was like, oh. It's like I evolved. I hate to bring up Pokemon, but it's like Pokemon, Pikachu evolving to fucking Raichu. That's what I felt like when I did that. It's like, oh shit, and I fucking turned the hops, and I was like, damn, this is it right here. And I just knew I was never gonna take them out. Yeah, how you like me now? I'm flossing on you niggas like, blah. Yeah, so I'm a flop. Nah, that's where you guys are wrong. I shit on niggas, that's why I rap with a diaper on. Don't be approaching me with none of your mess. Talk about where I belong. Just tell your friends I'm Look at Dizzy Wright becoming famous now. Look at this guy. Where he at? He in here? This nigga get on my goddamn nerves. Nah. Dizzy Wright. Last year he was nobody. This year he sell records. He makes music so fast and he wants it really bad. Like his drive is just way up there. Now he's signing this shit now. I mean, nobody even wanted to stay on there. I mean, when I walked in that motherfucking niggas ain't even know I was. You know, to say that there's no competition would, would be a lie. Rap is a competitive art. Yeah. Damn. I didn't see how it was. I don't know what the fuck that was. That's just like, I think it's on it. I feel like I'm the little big homie with Hobson. Huge fan. This album, I heard it before, classic. This one, just as good. Maybe even better. I don't know, he's a time. I really like him both. I like being behind Hop. I like, you know, rolling with the nigga, him saying something and then. You know, as soon as you get behind him, you know, you're getting me. And to even get to him, you got to get to me. Every artist that we bring on needs to bring something different to the table, reach a different demographic, be a different voice. And Dizzy was like the perfect next artist because he's so much different than Hobson. Hobson, I love you! You mind if Hobson It's my favorite song. Whereas 
Hobson wasn't the cool guy, like Dizzy is kind of the cool guy. He's always had attention from people. Man, I hate rap, but if the shoe fits where? Hobson doesn't smoke weed, Dizzy smokes a lot of it. How you stop, nigga? They don't got no brakes on it. <laughs> we designed Funk Volume to be diverse, and that's what's happening, and it's really contributing to the momentum. We all have a belief system. We all live, we all die, we all need to be impacted. Now. And that's my fucking autograph. The work makes the dream work, can't trust them. Tracking lives right like shit. It's gangster, man. Yo, you got some crazy fans, Dizzy, right, man? My fans don't be doing that with my music, man. How come, man? He's doing so much right now to where it's making me feel like, damn, I, I need to step my game up. Changing lives. I ain't got bars <laughs> like you, man. How do you get bars like you? He motivates like me and inspires me to see him. Like, he's right there now. He's, he's doing it big. It's internal competition that hopefully fuels each other to make better music. These two are about to race, and Hobson said he's faster than uh, Usain Bolt but definitely faster than Dizzy. So they're about to race from that end to this end to see who can win. So I'm Team Hobson, just for the record. Come on, Dizzy. Come on, Dizzy. Come on, Dizzy. Get his ass, Dizzy. Get his ass, Dizzy. Get his ass, Dizzy. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. He took me. Yeah. You wanna go again, sir? Oh, Alright, let's go again. Oh, they're going again. We're going again. Hey, right, we got a race. I had my money on Dizzy. That first one looked close. Hop might have got him. Go! The trailer, you know. Let me let me walk on this motherfucker, you know. I had two managers. They hooked me up with this dude named Damon Elliott. He told me that he was gonna help me get a record deal, and then he told me that Tamika Wright was interested in signing me. What number photo shoot was this? Oh, this is my first one. I feel Hollywood a little. I told people about the situation in my neighborhood, and they're like, Tamika Wright, you know that's the bitch who fucked over Bone Thugs and all this shit, and she fucked over Ruthless Records, and I'm like, what? Some of the dudes who really wanted me to sign the deal specifically just so they can get the cut out of the signing bonus that I was gonna get, they're just like, man, that was years ago, man. She was new in the music industry, so of course she didn't know. And I was like, you're right. Yeah, how, how was she supposed to know? Easy e died, she had to take over. Of course she's not gonna understand fully. <laughs> It's all of us, man. We finally signed, I got the money, and I was like, cool, I'm in the game. I got my record deal. You know, now it's like, I'm the guy. I mean, even though it's just a photo shoot, but still. We got $100,000, I made it, I'm in the game. All these people here are here for me. Like, if I wasn't here, then nobody else would be here. And I thought I made it. I was like, yes, it was 2007. I got the money, and that's really all I got out of the fucking situation. I know that feeling, that's what's so funny about it. I don't know, man. No, the jacket is hot. You ain't that. No, but is it, is it Hobson, though? I mean, is it Hobson? Like, do I come out spitting raw with you? Like, is this the. I'm kind of unbalanced right now because I'm two people at one time. They didn't give a shit about music. Still in my basement. And I liked it that way, but they didn't care about going to Hobson. Here, let's upgrade your studio. Let's upgrade your quality. Let's, let... They didn't show me nothing about no engineering. They didn't show me nothing about anything. They didn't give a fuck about the music. And I was so mad, because then I remember seeing all these cool MySpace layouts that these other artists had, like J-Rock and Asher Roth, fucking Nipsey Hussle. I was like, man, these fools are doing it big, and I'm over here. I got a record deal, too. How come I'm not fucking in the game like that? Nobody's fucking. And I was just mad. We just stopped meeting. And she wouldn't even like really respond to my emails. It's like you made it, but you didn't make it. It was equivalent to feeling like if you wanted to find the love of your life and then you found her and then she died. And then it's like, <laughs> it's like, oh. Yeah, I'm an and I'll just sit there and I'll always talk to my man, just like, man, I'm a disser. I'm a fucking disser. They're like, nah, don't do it, Hobson. Don't do it. All I had to do was just upload the shit. I had everything ready. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably the 
the sickest motherfucker who don't get recognized. Easy E's wife's life somewhere now jeopardized. She signed me and I was set aside for like three and a half years. I don't think I remember why. I'm fucking dope and this is my reward. That's why I could then the last time I actually saw her, it probably went along the lines of us leaving the meeting and her going, okay, well, um, yeah, we'll get together everything for the tour that you're gonna go on and we're gonna get together the promotion for your album and we're gonna make this big. And then nothing, <laughs> nothing happened. And those were the exit words before I left the office and thinking that that was gonna happen. Until this day, I'm still waiting for that album to blow up. Bitch, I'll never lend you a hand And I'ma make sure nobody ever sign with you again You know why? I sag my pants and kill my ass And then the money eventually faded away after um, uh, about a year and a half, two years And I was broke again And then I was, I was flat broke Flat fucking broke Like not even $5 in a bank account I had no bank account Well, I guess my career professionally started when I quit school in 2008 like my third year in college, I was like, oh shit, I'm bouncing around different majors, don't know what I really want to do, I'm getting kind of good rapping. It just so happened my brother just got laid off because of the economy. I was at a corporate job doing consulting in Chicago, um, doing like strategy and operations type stuff. So the recession got him. It just so happened to match up with the time that you know, Swizz was super frustrated at UC Irvine, so he wanted to take a shot at music and do that full time, you know, because he knew he was talented. He just needed to get out there. I uh, quit school to, to support me just to live, move back to my dad's house, was able to save money and worked at Foot Locker. And at the same time, Hop was in an equally frustrating position, being signed to Ruthless Records and, and them not doing anything with his music. You know, he was just kind of stagnant. He didn't feel like he was moving anywhere, so they both needed help just kind of getting their music out there. I think at the time, like, cause when I got laid off, I was, kind of, I was talking with some of my homies I went to business school with, and we were just trying to think maybe we'll just buy a business and grow it. But we were looking at like hearing aid companies and signage companies, you know, just grow it and sell it. I think I remember specifically it was a conversation we had in Las Vegas, you know, where he expressed a lot of passion for, for wanting to really do this. I was at a point where it was like with or without him, like I'm gonna be a rapper. And I saw it in his eye that he really wanted to, you know, take a shot at music. He said, yeah, and that's where it all started. Yeah, I mean, I think he believed it. He had to believe it to make me believe it. Him and Hop, they both had confidence. You know, he wanted to do shows. He wanted to put out music, grow a fan base, and make a career out of it. You know, obviously that's my brother. You know, I, I love him. So it, yeah, it kind of came out of nowhere. All right, I'm recording. On three, two, one, go. I met Dame through Swizz. Swizz told me his brother was like a super business guy who went to college and all that stuff. We all met up and talked about music and the things that he could contribute. So over, over time, we just came to an agreement that he'll do all the business side of everything and I'll handle the creative side of things. Okay, let me see how that looks. Was that close? Yeah, it was close enough. Oh my God. Come on, you come in. All right, be on the phone. Artists can put out music now and prove that people like it. They don't need anybody telling them. So I wanted to make sure that the guys never had anybody dabbling in their creative process. Wait, wait back home. That was a oh, Come on, like, give me, let me see. In terms of the strategy, we just knew that the fan base was key. And we made this little plan about just social networking and using Facebook and MySpace. And you spend the time to put together good visuals and, and respond to people that comment positively on the music. Well, you know, oh, <laughs> talking to fans and doing webcam shows and, and being consistent with it. I'm talking to you, you can't just get up and, what are you doing? I don't wanna look at your The phone. fans are everything. Mr. Hollywood right here, I'm just gonna get up while I'm talking to Hobson. If you have enough fans, you can tour. If you have enough fans, you can get sponsorship. And then we planned a mixtape. We came up with a logo, came up with some colors to represent the company. We just started moving from there. You know, but shirts needed to be printed up. Hop needed help with rent, you know, and you just start to see your bank account go like that. At some point, that is Shit's gotta stop. I was crazy. Or Well, for me personally, it's been extremely stressful. You know, just given 
the background that I'm used to, you know, more corporate environment, a lot more structure, a very high level of professionalism, you know, people calling you back, people emailing you back. I didn't really work with artists. Artists think totally different. So it took a lot of getting used to, a lot of patience, and I'm not naturally a patient person, so I can map out like the perfect plan in my head, you know, but it all can't be executed because maybe that's not how the artist works, or maybe that's not what the artist wants. To be honest, there was there were several times where I thought I was gonna throw in the towel. But like, yeah, early days, we were in the position of most artists that I talk to these days that are trying to come up. And I think only two years ago, we tried to do a Halloween show. This sauce for everyone that's from California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For real. It is, yeah. And there was literally like seven people that showed up. Let's get it. it was very embarrassing performing in front of seven people while acting like it's a big concert. We only made like $50 that night total, so the venue got 25 and we got 25 I have to give Hobson and Swizz a lot of credit because they did a lot of grinding and, and just believing that we would eventually, you know, catch some momentum and win. Because looking back at some of the shows that we did, like, it was borderline embarrassing. Like, yeah, I don't like it now. I'm fucking on you niggas like.